create every create every damn day. Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> that's the saying you have on your Twitter, I believe. That's right. Mm-hmm. I, it's on my Twitter and my Instagram, and I think I even used to have it in my email signature, but now it's just Social House Films. <laughs> How is that possible to create every day? Is it possible? I mean. It's, it's absolutely possible. And it doesn't, you don't need to be like creating, like finishing a screenplay every day, but you can outline something. You can even write like one scene that you're really excited about that you see very clearly in your head. You could even, you know, whip out the camera and try and just do a little bit of something, you know, wh- whatever it is that's speaking to you, whatever's like calling to your creative heart that day, that's the best day ever, seriously. And even if you're not feeling that creative, like I would challenge people to just, Either take out a pen and paper or their laptop or their phone, depending on whatever whatever your thing is, and just try to create something and just keep going until you've made something. And even if it's not great, you got tomorrow because you're, you're going to create again tomorrow. And there's just this feeling of accomplishment to some degree. There's a feeling of growth. You know, you've tried something, maybe even outside of your comfort level. And if you keep doing that, it's just like investing or fitness. Like every day, you're just putting in a little bit of time. You're putting in a little bit more investment. And you're getting better without even realizing it. And you're like nourishing your soul. So it's really fun. A lot of people might have said, well, that sounds great, but I don't have time. I'm working four jobs, Mm -hmm. especially here in L.A. Everybody's got these different gig jobs. What would be your answer to that? You know, I am definitely not a stranger to working multiple jobs. Before I moved out to L.A., I was uh, doing all types of like gig works where you just any job that would come up. I had a little diary and I was like, yep, I need the money. Let's go. And I totally get it. Sometimes you actually can't uh, have the time or even the resources to, you know, maybe get Final Draft or Celtics or what, what have you where to start crafting your, your craft. But I think you can even create in your mind. I, think, I also think I sound very nerdy that way. But some of my best times have just been like thinking, brainstorming about new scenes or new ideas and really trying to visualize that entire scene or, or script play out in my mind. And even then, I, f- I feel, even if nothing has been committed to paper or digital, I still feel like, cool, that was really good. I dig it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel accomplished for that day. So no matter what, even if you are a gig worker, you feel really busy. I mean, everyone thinks, right? Everyone's like up there in their brain spending some time. So why not try and be creative when you're up there? And one thing about gig jobs uh, from having worked on myself is that yeah. you're driving from one to the other. And sometimes yeah. your car is like your little house for the day. Exactly. You're changing, you got you're your eating. Yeah. <laughs> you got your music and your water and maybe an outfit change depending on the job you're going to. Um, but, you you know, you always have a little bit of time in your brain to, to start thinking creatively. And even like like check out someone else in the car and see what they're up to and kind of try and envision what their life is like because they have this whole complex world going on. And that's inspiration for some for something you can create in your mind. So I think it's all as long as you're just allowing yourself to have that flexibility and, and play and try and create, you're doing it. So be be kind to yourself and just just let yourself run wild with the creativity. What happens if two days go by and you haven't created anything, Victoria? They're sad days. (laughs) Um, If if that happens, you know, that that, and that does happen because you get busy. You certainly, as much as it's as fun as it is to play, you know, imagination, you have life, like real things that you need to uh, commit yourself to. So I completely understand that. Don't, the best thing you can do is just start as soon as you're able. Start today if you can. Start the next morning. Don't beat yourself up about what you can do the past two days. Start tomorrow. Start fresh. And if you can't, pick a day the next day off where you can actually do something. And, and try and challenge yourself just a little bit. You know, it, it's okay. It's certainly okay to spend the time in your brain meditating or just, you know, brainstorming. But if you can, if you have the time to just at least put something on paper, just make it something a little bit more tangible that you can really, like, look at this piece of work that I created it's a huge pat on the back and it makes you feel much better for skipping a couple days. Have you ever shown your work to someone and received praise and then another time maybe shown your work and not received praise? Yes. And how did both <laughs> affect your future work? Oh gosh. I'll I'll keep name, you know, of course, keep names out of out of things, but this this happened to me recently. And and it was it was actually a really rough day because so I, I received some feedback on a piece of work and, you know, maybe like one, two, three people who are all close friends gave really kind feedback. They said they really loved it. Um, and But, you know, you always wonder, like, you're my friend. Are you just being polite? Or... And then there was the fourth friend who uh, <laughs> I have no idea if he liked it or not because he gave me quite a bit of notes. Um, and that's totally fine because that's life and that's how we get better. 
I also, uh, as Aaron would say, like to like filter things. So you try and you filter everything, all the good and the bad. You take what you can and then try and filter out what you don't need. That's in a perfect world because the next, I read the comments, I read them late, late at night, went to bed, I didn't sleep that well. The next day I was just like down in the dumps, Eeyore, I couldn't quite put my finger on what was wrong with me. And I mean, that's just life. Like people aren't always gonna like what I come up with. I completely understand that. But for some reason, this one particular like feedback of, of notes, I was like, this thing I created is trash. What was I thinking? You know, and I, I was totally hard on myself. Um, and then really what I did to get out of that was I just talked to Aaron about it. I said, you know, Aaron is my business partner and my love partner. Um, and so I, I lean on him quite a bit for just all, all types of feelings and, and creations. And so um, I told him how I was feeling and he was like, yeah, totally understand. What we create isn't always gonna be for everyone. We are gonna get so much more feedback in the future. Some people are gonna like it. Some people are going to destroy it. So we just have to be confident in what we're creating, know that the vision that we're setting out is what we intended to make and just be proud of it as best as we can be. And that was, that was the, that eventually got me out of it. I think I was probably still a little sad for like six or six or seven more hours. And then eventually I, you know, went to bed and I was much better the next day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good place to get to. It sounds like, um, you get like a muscle almost, Yeah. you know, if, if people don't like it. So. Yeah, it, it, it certainly doesn't feel good, but right. it's so needed. You know, you it, it actually, I think it's like practice. You know, I'm still a very small scale independent filmmaker and producer. I hope to be a big scale one. And I can't imagine what it's going to be like when, you know, you're getting these major, maybe it's Hollywood Reporter and IndieWire, whatever, they're writing you up and possibly shredding your work, shredding work that maybe you worked three, four years on or, or, or more. You know, you're lucky if it's only three or four years. Um, and I mean, that must be really gut wrenching for a lot of creators. But I think that now, while we're still in like a smaller formative level, I take it as a lesson. It's like, okay, okay, this is a muscle. Like I have to get used to people not liking it. It's not always gonna feel good. Sometimes I'm gonna have bad days, but just move on. Just take what you can, move to the future. Like that. <laughs> did you see the Hillbilly Elegy? I did. Did you yeah. like it? I did, yeah. Yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was excellent. Yeah. And I actually wanna watch it again, but I understand that some people had strong opinions about it. Yeah. I was surprised. I have no idea why I watched it. I mean, I, I feel like maybe there was like a little bit of political undertone that rubbed some people the wrong way. But I by no means am from that uh, part of the country, but I'm from a town that's smaller, you know, less connected. We had our own difficulties, you know, in, in my Southern Maryland hometown. And, you know, you kind of, you, you see parts of your own self in a story like that. And mm. I see that person who tried their best to like lift themselves out of the area that they weren't happy with. His name is uh, Vance. Uh, J.D. Vance. J.D. Yeah. Vance, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think that's so inspiring. That, that, those, are, those are the stories I want to watch, where somebody lifted themselves out. They saw that something wasn't working for them. They lifted themselves out, and they went after their passion, and they, they worked hard, and they got it. I think that's fantastic, and I love that they made a movie about it. I love Ron Howard, and I'm like, I loved it. I hope that people are a little kinder in the <laughs> criticisms about it. Um, also, I know how much work goes into a creation like this. So I, I hope to never, ever shred a, a film that's beautifully done like that because it's a lot of work.